What if I were to suggest that you play a key role in the awakening world? You are watching this because you have heard the call. We can start right now by opening our hearts and minds. Welcome to the awakening world. Hello, everybody. I'm Love Coach Scott Katamas. And yes, I love watching Jerry rocking out. I saw people that are now getting to know that song going, yes. And that's how I feel every time I hear it. Um, welcome. It is The Awakening World. It's our Saturday night edition. And it's a really special weekend because we are exploring really deep questions. We're exploring true love. What is true love really? What have we learned about true love? How do we manifest, experience true love? How does it show up in our life? Um, and can we, through really experiencing true love, create heaven on earth? Or how do we create heaven on earth? And I, I'm so grateful that I'm getting to do this topic with the magnificent Larissa Stowe, um, who uh, just gave an incredible sharing for our early Zoom room show which reminds me welcome everybody watching on facebook and youtube delighted that you're watching come join us this is going to be an interactive show tonight we're going to take some of your questions we're going to react and respond to you and it's so much easier if you're in our zoom room so here's what you want to do go to globalpeacetribe.com globalpeacetribe.com and register it just takes a minute and then what will happen is you'll get an automatic email. It'll give you the Zoom rooms for all three of our shows. We do three shows every weekend, um, Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday morning. And all of our shows bring incredible presenters, amazing human beings, and you. And we interact. And we're becoming more and more interactive. And we're building this incredible community. And right now we've got um, our community in our Zoom room, a lot of our people that come every week. Um, so welcome, come and join us. And let me share with you a little bit about what we have tonight. Tonight's going to be a little different. I've kept it to a smaller group of people. Um, and we're going to go really, really, really deep. And uh, one of the people that I've invited is one of my closest friends and total family, and that's Emily Oram. Uh, Emily is also known as the Heart Ninja. And um, I had the <laughs> honor and pleasure of doing life with Emily, uh, living together for five years, where I experienced the many, many sides of the Heart Ninja and watched her become the Heart Ninja. <laughs> Um, so but when I knew we were going to do this topic, Emily, <clears throat> I knew I wanted to invite you because you truly are experiencing and learning about love in many, many different ways. So thank you for being with us. And I'm really looking forward to what you have to share. <clears throat> we also always have amazing music and um, coming to us all the way from near Byron Bay, Australia. Chad Wilkins is coming back and Chad is a wonderful uh musical force who's going to sing to us all about love and so looking forward to hearing your your musical offerings and also your your ruminations about love 
And thank you for being with us, Chad. Thanks for having me. We also have somebody who is a PhD psychologist. She's an author. She's, um, and we met her through you. She was watching our show and got to know her through the community. And she has a lot to also share about love. Josiane, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. Thank you yeah. so much. Uh, it's, gonna, it's gonna be great. Thank you. And I can't wait to hear what you have to say about tonight's topic. Thank you. Thank you. You know, we always have an after show. Tonight's after show is going to feature my good friend Eden Amadora and Fanny and Vigari are going to play music. And they've become kind of our after show regulars and they're fabulous. They play beautiful, beautiful music. Um, we also have a video from Deva Pramal and Mitten um, that we're going to play a little bit later. It's a video they made just for us. But now I'm going to put the spotlight on uh, my co-host, and look at, she has multiplied. <laughs> we went from one incredible, magnificent uh, soul into five. Um, and <laughs> in, uh, in uh, the Encinitas Carlsbad area, celebrating the birthday of someone I, I love and adore, Viraja Prema. Mm -hmm. I've known Viraja for years. I adore her. She's been on my shows. And it's her birthday weekend. <laughs> Um, and so how better to explore this topic than to have these five amazing women. Uh, so Larissa, I'm going to turn it over to you to introduce your friends. I, this is my beloved sister, soul sister here, Viraja. She is the reason why we're here, you just said, and adore her, I've known her for how many years, 15, something like that? Yeah, 16. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, she shared the story with you that I was at a small yoga studio with our band, Shakti Tribe, and, and we started jumping up and down at the same time. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like just, we just connected heart to heart, mm -hmm. and she is just a force of love, and her work in the world is all about self-love and working with women and couples and for people to embody. Um, and I adore her. So, <laughs> I adore her. <laughs> This is Isla. I met Isla at San Onofre. Like we were working at that time on the front lines of trying to shift the situation and not have the canisters going to the ground. And and so I got to meet Isla, this beautiful soul. And and Viraja and Isla are really, really wonderful friends. And so I'm excited to get to be with her tonight as well because I haven't seen you in so long, right? Yeah. And I just met Shelly tonight yeah. <laughs> for, the, for the first time. <laughs> and she's a dear friend of many people that that are in common in this group. And I know she works on with people on manifestation. Mm -hmm. That's what I've heard. Mm -hmm. Yes. And excited to get to know her. Mm -hmm. And this is Amber Hartnell. <laughs> and I love this one. I met her years ago, right? With Don't the even Resonance know how long ago. Yes. Foundation when our mm -hmm. band was performing at one of the events, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And so it's really wonderful to, to see you and, and be in her beautiful home, too. So yeah. excited to be with these ladies, these uh, goddesses, actually. Yeah. Goddesses. It's the, the energy coming from the five of you is pretty incredible. Yeah. <laughs> Amber, thank you for opening up your home temple uh, to the goddesses, but also to our Awakening World Global Peace Tribe. Thank you so much. Um, and I forgot to mention one quick thing. I always want to uh, appreciate uh, the Sign Network for bringing us out over 100 different Facebook groups and pages. Thank you, John and Summer Raymer. And special love for Summer. We're going to do a little healing prayer later on today during our year, uh, prayer circle time. But thinking of you, Summer. Summer's father passed a few days ago. Um, and I also want to thank everybody watching on Unify. We love Unify. Mm, thank you. Thank you, Unify. I am putting the spotlight fully onto the five of you, and Larissa, I think you're going to do a, an invocation and a song for us, and then we're going to hear what you all have to say about tonight's topic. I invite us all to just drop into our bodies, our beautiful body temples together, and breathe. Breathe deeply. Um. 
calling back must be right I'm calling back my heart I'm calling back must be right I'm calling back my heart come home come home she's calling me the river returns to the sea come home come home she's calling me just trust the wind beneath your wings. I'm calling back <clears throat> my spirit. I'm calling back my heart. I'm calling back my spirit I'm calling back my heart come home come home she's calling me the river returns to the sea come home come home she's calling me just trust the wind beneath your wings. I'm calling to my spirit. I'm calling to my heart. Calling to my spirit, I'm calling to my heart. Come home, come home, she's calling me. The river returns to the sea. Come home, come home. She's calling me, just trust the wind beneath your wings. Calling to my spirit. I want to invite everybody who's watching, whether you're watching live, whether you're in our Zoom room or on Facebook, or all the people watching the replay, the recording of this, mm -hmm. to really use that beautiful invocation to drop in. And as we listen to our presenters, as we hear the music tonight, as we hear their thoughts, may it serve as a sacred mirror for your own journey. What does true love mean to you? What does heaven on earth mean to you? How do you experience it? How do you long for it? And I am gonna invite all, all five of you to share, ideally a personal experience. What, what has been your journey of longing for true love, experiencing true love? Um, and how does that relate to your perception of how we can create 
heaven on earth in our lifetime or even right now in this moment. And I look forward to hearing what all of you have to share. Birthday girl. <laughs> I feel like I'm on um, the, tr the freeway with um, all sorts of traffic happening. Which one? Which car is going to get in front? <laughs> which thing? Let's think about <laughs> Yes. Um, goodness. Mm -hmm. So it's my day. I'm celebrating my birthday. Mm -hmm. And um, I also had a near death experience about six, almost exactly six years ago. Mm -hmm. So I also celebrate that on some level, like the integration mm -hmm. and the upgrade that that brought me. And one piece yeah. I wanted to share, which is that the basically the recovery I had from that, because I had a traumatic brain injury, was um, you know, was one where my system was a little more sensitive, like extremely more sensitive than normal, because like the all of the buffer was gone, mm -hmm. and I would get the the feedback loop of my body if I used my brain in a certain way, I would it would hurt. Like it would just automatically give me this feedback of pain, pain, pain. And what words I have now for that, they had like months and months of like biofeedback. And, um, thank you. Um, so what I would equate that, what it, words I'd call that are just like the, um, kind of more like the doing mind or the, the thinking mental or ordinary mind like if I was trying to look at something and figure it out and maybe pick it apart it would hurt but if I found like this place to relax kind of open up it would totally shift it would shift into this peaceful openness and from the way my system would register it I'd go Poof. my heart would open and it's like taking the the top off the convertible and I'm like, ah, look at the sky. Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So have on earth for me is like, how do I be in that all the time? Like, how do I live in that place where it's my heart and this connected, um, isness presence mm -hmm. that I can be with what it is without it giving this feedback loop of pain or hard or try or like extra effort. Um, and it's been, yeah. Yeah. And that was because I was also, I'm also a mother. So I have, at the time I had, um, was the sole provider with, um, with two kids. And so there was this whole other thing of like, can I lean into support that they're going to be okay, that I'm going to be okay. Like, and of course I want to go right to this, right to this, like at all these reasons to go right to this and question and doubt. And I was shown over and over, like the love is there, the support is there. And the more that I was like, whew, opening and relaxing into that. Mm. And the willing to not know, <laughs> willing to discover, mm -hmm. things would show up, would show up. So my practice at the time and is still currently like how can I be mm -hmm. open to being with and receiving and allowing myself to be in the in the, the putting myself in the seat for love to be love to receive love to share love mm -hmm. yeah just like that just like that just like this <laughs> just like this just like this Receiving Thank you for sharing that, Varasha. Thank you. And I remember that time of your life. Glad you're still with us. Better than ever. Yeah. Yes, it's so true. Yeah. Upgraded. Yeah. Upgraded. Yeah. Upgraded. Upgraded. It's a divine appointment. Yes, that's that's the thing, right? That these everything happens for, for us to up level if we so say yes. Right? Yeah. If we so choose to say yes. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Amber, um, you always have wonderful things. I've, I've listened to you speak many times publicly and privately, 
What, uh, what would you like to share on this topic? Yeah, let's go in a little bit more. I was having a similar experience to Viraja when the topic was posed as I began to tune in. So many threads we could pull on. And what came to me was really, there's only one relationship here and it's this one. And so when we get right with ourself and we really turn our gaze in towards our connection with the divine, with source, with knowing that we fundamentally are the source of love as our fundamental identity. And we cloak it with our lovely personalities and structures. But ultimately, for me, it was about some pretty catastrophic, catastrophic events that launched me into an experience of contrast where I got to go from being very loved by my mother to her sudden death. But the night that she died, which was obviously for a seven-year-old girl, that is radical trauma to go through. But she gave me a gift the night that she died. And she planted a seed in my mm -hmm. consciousness that began to flower that night, but kept flowering through all of the very difficult experiences. Mm -hmm. So similar to Viraja, mm -hmm. I got tested. And through an immense amount of pain, I came to know that we can keep sourcing deeper and deeper and it's like the pain and all of the things we go through are like the surface activity on the water but if we can dive down beneath all of that noise and activity the well is always there for us to return to mm -hmm. so every relationship is really reflecting this one back to us mm -hmm. so i take full responsibility for sourcing from my own well and saturating in the love that I am mm -hmm. so that I can share the overflow with anyone who happens to come by. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you very much, Amber. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Shelly, since you're right next to what uh, what would you like to share? Yeah, I'm feeling in as well and just really resonating with everything that's been shared so far. Well, I'm I'm feeling into my current practice of embodying, being, experiencing love. Mm -hmm. And my current practice is really focused on my practice and my partnership. Mm -hmm. And this is where I, and I think a lot, I don't think I'm alone in this, but I can get the most thrown out of my full embodiment and alignment it's like when i'm alone and in my own space and in my own juice it's it's because maybe i've practiced so much and I've, i'm so familiar with the pathway to really resource and fe feel really filled up and overflowing but there's just that thing that happens for me in partnership where things come to the surface that can make it really hard to stay in that fullness, oh, yeah. to stay in that <laughs> seeing, <laughs> yeah, that scene, full seeing of love in front of me, in my partner, and love in myself. And so it really feels, for me, the, the advanced practice is what I'm in right now, and it is the advanced practice of partnership mm. and of being with someone every day and, and like just all of touching all the different places in each other that we touch and then still remembering to love, still choosing to love, still learning mm -hmm. how to love, how to see love, how to know love. I mean, yeah, I, I'm really good at doing it on my own, but I'm in that advanced practice and I feel if I stay with this practice, it's like more love than I could ever know will probably be the, the result of that because it's, it's an area where I collapse, can collapse out of love. Mm -hmm. And so my commitment to myself is to stay in this, this this type of love too, this dance of love. You know, thank you so much for bringing that up. Um, last weekend, our whole show, The Awakening World, was committed to relationship as sacred mirrors. Mm -hmm. And and so, of course, that's what you're pointing to. And, um, you know, there's an interesting thing that not everybody, well, I know, you probably all know this, but maybe not. Our brain, because we're wired for survival, 
our brain stores memory of painful encounters at five to 30 times greater than memory of pleasurable encounters mm -hmm. um, because we're built to survive. So that's why we meet somebody, we fall in love, it's awesome. But every time we perceive <laughs> that that person is judging us, criticizing us, blaming us, mm -hmm. our brain stores that memory. And that's why it's often someone that started as a beloved can become in our mind an enemy right mm -hmm. and i you know how we've all had that experience where you're in neutral and you see your lover or someone a family member and you're actually in neutral and you look at them and go what is it now what is it now who's had that experience right mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. they're already reacting and you haven't said or done anything mm -hmm. do you know it could be that the the shirt or the blouse or the dress you're wearing mm -hmm. The last time you wore it is when you guys had a fight. And so the brain just sees the image, right? That it triggers the memory, goes into protection mode, reptile brain takes over and the person gets reactive and you're in neutral. And so two things, one is for those of us that are in, or for those of you that are in like a marriage or a romantic relationship, Every time you have a fight, you got to make love five to 30 times to balance it out. Thank you, doctor. <laughs> Isla, thank you for, for waiting. I am eager to hear what you have to say. Well, I appreciate what you just had to say because that leads me into something that I'd love to talk about because the prescription for making love five to 30 times after was that <laughs> <laughs> is an option, but um, it's interesting because I found you were asking um, Larissa earlier what her practices are for um, loving or connecting to self or source. And so one thing that I do as an acupuncturist is do a lot of tapping and, and mm -hmm. I have really used that to help me through a lot of anxiety that I feel like I've faced throughout my life and have come to a place where I can... I mean, even this gives me anxiety, so it's doing a little bit of tapping. But um, um, the 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 experience that you gave of like, well, having a fight with your partner and seeing them wearing that red shirt could trigger it again. Going deep into those memories, you know, often what I'll have to do for myself is tap on those memories, get super specific about the visual. Okay, what color was the shirt, or what did it feel like on my skin, or you know, go through all the senses and and tap down what has felt the most triggering. So I've been using that very deeply to go through um, sort of like my personal peace project I've been doing to kind of strip away limiting beliefs and traumas that I've had and things that have um, kind of kept me from being the partner to my husband that I want or the mother that I want to be to my kids and. Um, I get choked up thinking about <sighs> like today, just, I was thinking how I get so angry at them sometimes and I don't want to be that way. So mm. it's like, like Amber was saying, like, how do we really connect to ourselves? And, and I find that when I get home and I'm stuck in the house and doing so much like housework that I like forget like who I am and how to connect to that love. So it's like really being in nature helps me. And I find like that sense of love and being in nature and just really mm -hmm. dropping into like how good it feels to be in my body and how good it feels to be with my sisters and like, you know, touching roses, all those things like helps me to really feel that true love and yeah, mm -hmm. to, you know, oh, move through any blocks. Thank you. <laughs> you know, whenever I see tears or the possibility of tears, I want to stop. Let's go there. Yeah. And so I'd love to ask you to go back to that moment that you had two minutes ago where the tears began to come. Mm -hmm. And I want to ask, what, what does that part of you have to say? What are those, what's, what's in there? Well, it's, it's interesting because I was thinking about my son and just how much I love my son so much. <laughs> His like seven-year-old face and he's so cute. <laughs> yeah, so cute. And just, you know, wanting to work on when I get angry and to like have a better outlet and be able to like, you know, work through that. Yeah. Thank you. So what I'm hearing is, is the tears are your longing to be able to sustain what's true, which is your love for your son, to be able to sustain that 
even when you're having a perfectly human moment of frustration <laughs> or anger or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, mm -hmm. longing is a good word. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. You know, um, I, I'm going to do a Love Coach Scott moment, and then I want to tune in to all of you about this. But um, it's important to remember that anytime we feel guilty, and most parents, especially mothers, feel guilty for yelling at their kid or whatever it may be. But remember that anytime we're experiencing guilt, congratulations, you're not a sociopath. <laughs> right. Right? Right. you feel guilty because you care yeah. mm -hmm. and actually guilt is a mind fuck underneath it is the beauty of your care mm -hmm. and and it's really important for any of us anybody watching if you experience guilt be careful because guilt can create paralysis mm -hmm. it can create i don't i feel guilty therefore i don't want to engage with where i might feel guilty about and it creates paralysis but if you just drop into the beauty like we just saw with this this wonderful mother underneath that the tears of oh god i yelled at my beautiful seven-year-old son underneath that is the beauty of your longing to always love him to always care for him at that level and that that's what's real right the moment of yelling at him or whatever and kids are resilient he doesn't even remember that you yelled at him by the way um probably um but what's true is that longing to always consistently love mm -hmm. so we can always find the beauty of care mm -hmm. so that was a wonderful segue into something that i believe at least four of you i don't know shelly but um are mothers so mm -hmm. what have you learned about true love um as mothers or in family Maybe I should go since I. Yeah, let's maybe go with the same order. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, being a mom is has been like the most incredible opportunity to learn uh, true love because first of all, like being a mama, I didn't know I could love that much in that kind of way. Like when when my my eldest was born, like giving birth to this being that just came out. She was the most beautiful thing ever. I couldn't take my eyes off of her. Like, I just couldn't. It was just like everywhere she went was like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm like, how can I be so in love with this bean? <laughs> and, and I found that, you know, she's a really different person. We're the same, but she's a Capricorn and, and I'm a, a Cancerian. And she and I are very different, but very similar you know, which is like the best thing ever. Mm -hmm. Like when you're really, really different in some ways and really similar, mm -hmm. um, the ways that she's different <clears throat> have been, you know, I've had some challenges with along the way. <laughs> and I remember when she was little, um, she was so into my music when she was little, she would dance to everything, right? She was, she was like a temple goddess dancer. It was bizarre watching this little itty bitty thing, just like the way she'd snake, you know, dance. Um, but then she got older and she'd come with me to the festivals and people would be like, you are so lucky, you know, that Larissa Stowe is your mom. And she'd just be like indignant because she'd be like, what about me? Mm -hmm. You know, and she didn't appreciate that everybody would say you're so lucky. Mm -hmm. And when people would say, well, how do you like the music? She's like, eh, it's not really my thing. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, she loved it when she was little, but she got to a certain age and there was this like me, you know, and for me, what that, the opportunity was, is just to totally accept her mm -hmm. exactly where she was choosing to be like fully, even though it could have felt personal, but it didn't mm -hmm. for me. Cause I was like, Oh, sure. You don't like it. You know, it's like, because I know I've seen the temple dance and when you're younger and it gave me this opportunity and she's given me consistent opportunities to surrender and love her just as she is like exactly as she is and she i swear it's almost like she does things just to see you still mm. love me now mom mm. <laughs> okay you think you're open-minded mom i'm gonna show you this now yeah. you know it's like <laughs> i'm like oh my god i am I'm in a different generation you know, it's, like, <laughs> it's like it's like the way she keeps pushing my my envelope mm. of showing me where i'm not as open um, she helps me to see that 
And my eight-year-old, my littlest star Marie, you know, she is a wild child, you know. Um, <laughs> she's wired very differently. She came in wired very, very differently. And she has what what has been, like when they, we did a brain scan on her with Dr. Amen when, Amen when she was really little because she was so like her first word was no 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 like whatever it was was no even if she said she wanted eggs you'd fix them for her and she'd go I hate eggs <laughs> <laughs> and so again it was scary to have a kid a child you know that that we found out her brain is all lit up and so that's her mechanism for being able to control when she feels out of control is to refuse everything at first mm. um and to and she's goes deep and she goes high and she goes far and she goes wide and mm. it's just like having a you know in your house and around you all the time <laughs> and she is giving me an incredible opportunity to drop in again into like the most profound, unconditional love, like to keep seeing the highest in her, even when she's like, love me now, love me now, love me now. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> you, know? you still love me, mom? I don't think so. Let me try this. You know, so, you know, that's a, yeah, I've, I've definitely as a mom have mm -hmm. had these wonderful opportunities and I love my kids. Like I love them. They're, they are my teachers. Mm -hmm. They are my little gurus. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm learning yeah, how to be love, no matter what. No matter what. <laughs> George Bernard Shaw had a, a really great quote. He said, there are two types of people. There are people that play the game of love me for what I do, which are those of us that are people pleasers. And then there are people that play the game of love me despite what I do. Right. Mm -hmm. That longing for unconditional acceptance. Um, and quite often that, you know, that especially is your wild child. And I adore Astara. I adore her. I have a thing for her. But yeah, she's playing that game. Love me to yes. spend time. Well, right. mm -hmm. thank you for sharing that. Who else wants to share how motherhood or family life has taught you about true love? I can share something else's. Amber. Yeah, honey. Mm -hmm. Come on. Piggybacking on that. I had the same experience that you described when my first son was born. Three days and I couldn't stop weeping because I was so overwhelmed mm -hmm. with the amount of love that I felt for this being. And I considered myself a loving person, very loving person before. I was floored, humbled, in awe. Mm -hmm at the profundity of love from this being who had been born out of my own body and what a miracle that is. <laughs> you can't really downplay what a miracle that is. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. And my capacity to love got so radically expanded that it evoked a new level of devotion in me. And that's the part of love the kind of flavor of love that I want to highlight in motherhood is that these beings come in completely dependent upon us. And even when you're exhausted, haven't slept, doesn't matter what it is, you still show up. Mm -hmm. And you show up with love, not with resentment. So many mm -hmm. nights of my child being up in the middle of the night, mm -hmm. not sleeping, and just sitting on the bouncy ball with my baby, nursing him, falling asleep <laughs> on the ball, but still there, and so much love. Because what else do we do but show up and care for these beings with all that we have? And similarly to Larissa, very dynamic, two very dynamic boys I have, and they've stretched my capacity for patience as well, <laughs> yeah. which is another form of love. Like when we can stay, and again, when all of our triggers are and the alarms are sounding and we can stay present and keep breathing, take responsibility for how we're feeling and and also model that for them. So that's one thing with my boys is I have allowed them to see me when in a moment when I've been a hot mess, when I'm just feeling all the feelings at once and I allow myself to feel them, show them that it's safe to feel what we feel. And then once it discharges, there's always peace on the other side. So I'm grateful that my boys, I've witnessed in them that they've, through this modeling, have developed this capacity. So, yeah, I think that's what we share. Good stuff. Thank you. Yeah. And I'm imagining, you know, a lot of the people in the chat box are commenting, and, you know, I recognize that a lot of our audience 
uh, 80 percent of our audience are women and obviously m many of them have had children and probably can relate to all of this mm -hmm. so let's talk viraja has something yes i would love to share mm -hmm. uh, well before i became a mother i had this sense like becoming a mother would be part of my spiritual path mm -hmm. and it was to happen like I knew what to do and I knew all the steps and like I that wisdom wanted to live through this body in this life and drink the nectar of all of the goodness and all of the gifts and all the beauty and all the sacredness of that dynamic relationship with source mm. with the body with creation with this yeah. the intimacy yeah the intimacy of this presence and attunement through every miller moment of the way mm -hmm. this being that comes mm -hmm. as the women have already said like through our body like, <laughs> wow. one of my biggest like freak outs was like because i've had been a procrastinator and i was like wait i can't stop it and i'm not in charge when it comes out <laughs> it's like how is this possible <laughs> But um, <laughs> it's really like my that part of my brain went. Rah! Um, so I'm in. I like to kind of see this journey of life is like coming back to wholeness. And the work I do around intimacy, it's like it, you know, some people call it shadow work or parts work or internal family systems or there's um, these different aspects of who we are, and it's like bringing them into wholeness, like bringing them all together into the loving embrace of acceptance and welcome. They have their place. It's all okay. It's all okay. And being a mama, you know, we get, I get to not only offer that to them, but what I've noticed is that there's little parts, there's parts of them that will highlight the parts of me that haven't felt loved and accepted. That haven't felt safe, that haven't felt welcomed, and that's when I might get angry, mm. or I might get out of balance, mm. and it's it's mm. like a, the neon sign going, "Look here, mm -hmm. look here." Yeah. <laughs> they want love, but you want love. Like we all need the love, mm. and then it's like learning the skills to 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 be with that, mm. to meet that part, mm. and to love it and to welcome it. And so, my opportunity to be a guide for these children is 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 merely you know like for their sustenance for their survival not for them for them knowing who they are they're who they are and who they being who they are is helping me know who i am mm -hmm. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> right mm -hmm. and like so this yes. this wholeness that i'm waking up to and that they are in their stage of knowing and reflecting that back to them and then reflecting that back to me so we can live in this mm. euphoria even on <laughs> earth of love and acceptance of all of, all of who we are mm. so yeah, yeah. thank you to all of you that we're seeing on camera and thank you to everybody who's watching who is a mother um, because it's the most incredible thing you will do in life and we live in a culture that downplays it. We live in a culture that doesn't celebrate being a good mother. You know, how many times have we heard, oh, she's just a housewife. Oh, she's just a mom, right? You know, and it's it's the most important thing of all. Not so much, the most important. It is, it is. And, and, and truly impossible to imagine the lessons of patience that you all have experienced. Um, so thank you. I want us to get to the second part of the equation, the heaven on earth part. And I'm going to actually read um, our wonderful friend, the wild abbot, Jerry. He's with us. He runs the Mystic Monastery. Um, and he wrote a beautiful definition. Um, home is heaven on Mother Earth. And that's a nice starting point, you know. Um, and uh, that is a, a good definition. Uh, obviously, um, many of us have a spiritual belief or desire to experience heaven on earth. Um, obviously, our planet is going through this incredible time of change. And here we are. 
um, one of the things that we, the reason I call it the awakening world is that this is it. We are watching through climate change, through all the things that are going on, this incredible opportunity for humanity to transform. And I, you know, I, I know three of you, and I know all three of you, Viraja, Larissa, Amber, are very dedicated to transforming consciousness. Um, and just about everybody who watches this show is dedicated. That's the whole point. So, of course, we're longing for heaven on earth in these bodies. We're longing for that to happen. And so I look forward to hearing what each of you have to say about how can we achieve it? What are practices to get us there? Is heaven on earth already here? And like David chipping away at the marble, um, I mean, um, Michelangelo chipping away at the marble that's not David. And that's how David emerges, the statue of David emerges. What are your thoughts? What are your feelings about creating heaven on earth in our lifetime, in these bodies at this time? Well, I guess I'll go again. <laughs> You're allowed. You're the co-host of the show. <laughs> well, what's really present for me right now is the weevolution, um, which is joining hearts and hands and linking arms with one another and focusing on what we do want to create mm -hmm. in this world because we've been focusing a really long time on what we don't want. Mm -hmm. And even right now, you can see it happening in politics. There's a lot going on at playing us against one another. Mm -hmm. And if we take a step back, you know, we have a choice. We have a choice to see what we want to create rather than focusing on our differences and focusing on mm -hmm. the places that we disagree with each mm -hmm. other. And I, I think that most of us on this planet can agree, you know, that, that, that love, you know, compassion, kindness, um, healthy families, uh, sustainable living, taking care of our planet, loving our planet, you know, that all of these things are, are really, really important. And if we link arms and hearts with one another and we focus on where we're going, mm -hmm. like where we want to go, together mm -hmm. and that make that our priority make that our agenda mm -hmm. yes i'm committed to creating heaven on earth meaning i'm committed to embodying love right here right now and and to lift each other up mm -hmm. you know rather than this idea of competition <laughs> it's there we can lift one another up we can celebrate each mm -hmm. other we can acknowledge where ideas come from rather than thinking we have to know everything. It's like, oh my God, yes, you know what you were saying, Amber. Yes, Shelly, you know, I love Baraja. It's like, Scott, we honor each other. You know, we, we exponentially start to grow. It's like the dots start connecting. Bam, 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 bam. You know, because we're growing together and we're going where we want to go. And I believe it's going to bring the, the, the earth, the new earth. I believe this is what she wants. I believe this is what she is actually asking for right now from all of us. I don't think that it's that we're the, the bad guys that, you know, we're, we're just hurting mama earth. I think it's actually a collective awakening that's happening. I think she's awakening as well to her own power um, as we awaken she's going wait a minute we can do this you know in love for love and we're going wait a minute there's another way we can do this we, we don't have to be in competition we don't have to just take 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 we can we can grow up out of the adolescent stage and we can grow into the the sovereign adults that we are which says yes yes to embodying love in this lifetime with one another so that's that's my vision um, and a lot of our visions you know it's a, it's a we vision i believe and so i keep standing in that we visioning because i know it's mm -hmm. our vision it's really our vision so we need to continue to talk about it and talk about it till it becomes normalized and it becomes a normal conversation that we're all having thank you thank you thank you i saw emily one of our panelists that we'll hear with has been going like this yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Other thoughts uh, from any of you? Um, and I'm so appreciating your wisdom. Thank you, everybody. The thing that came to me in feeling into heaven on earth, what, I, what came to me was the moment by moment recognition of that heaven on earth within the self. And I know for myself, when I'm in that alignment, when I'm in that embodiment, when I'm in the peace and all is well within, the action that is taken from that place, the ins inspiration that is taken, the movement that is taken creates more of that heaven on earth. Mm -hmm. And so again, I experience it as my responsibility to to be devoted and committed to my own alignment the best I can. And in that, there's a commitment to the creation of that alignment outside of self as well. But it gets created from within self in my experience first so that I always have to go back to that commitment to self to return there and then allow that to be created from me, from that space. Like Jesus said, as below, so above, as above, mm -hmm. so below. Um, yeah, and, and so many of our great spiritual teachers remind us of that, to, to, that we have to create it on the inside. Mm -hmm. uh, we had Reverend Michael Beckwith, who's somebody I really love, on the show a few times, and he talks about whenever they're creating something new for Agape, they always visualize it first. Mm -hmm. And until the group, the we, can visualize it in alignment, they don't even take any external steps yeah. towards making it happen. Right. Yep, yep, yep. Mm -hmm. Other thoughts uh, from Amber or Isla or Raja? I'll be happy to share. I feel like what was shared here is, is so complete and just a little poetic musing just to decorate it. <laughs> it's really I, I really, yes to the me and the we, it has to be both, right? Each yes. taking responsibility for embodying that frequency and emanating that congruently so that they are uh, a contributor of that to the we. Mm -hmm. uh, and in that personal connection that we each have, I, I think of us as like circuit connectors, right? Mm -hmm. Where where, where heaven on earth is a frequency that always exists in the here and now. And mm -hmm. we can choose to align with it, come into accord with it. And then as you beautifully expressed, to then watch as everything that emanates through us becomes an expression of it. Mm -hmm. But I like to think of it as in the circuit connecting of the actual current that is flowing of life force. This current of spirit flowing down through the body and all the way down into matter, into mm -hmm. the mother, like yeah. matter, right? Mm -hmm. And then being able to breathe that energy of the mother up and through us and offer it up to spirit. And I think of this dance as like spirit continually impregnating mm -hmm. matter and then lifting matter towards spirit. Mm -hmm. So I think of it like a lovemaking. Yes, mm -hmm. And I experience mm -hmm. it like a lovemaking within my own body, within my own sensing. And when I'm in that space. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. When I'm in that space, then that's what lights up the grid of possibilities. Then the, the what was what was a wall becomes a door. I think it's Joseph Campbell, yeah. the quote, yeah. right? That's mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. That's my poetic musings on that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Heaven yes. on earth is love making of spirit. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. In these bodies. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Cool. Okay, so here's. <laughs> That's what we're going to be talking about more about tomorrow, right? Yes. On our Sunday show. On our sacred Sunday show. Right? Oh. To nod to that. All right. So I, here's one last question for you um, because this is so dynamic. So we're going to go a little bit longer. I think we all recognize that when we're in that connection to divinity, when we're in that connection with each other, you know, our greatest moments in life are moments of connection. Conversely, our our most horrible moments in life are moments where we're really lost in the illusion of separation. Yes. So I know that each of you are powerful practitioners. What are your personal practices that you're willing to share for when you get lost in the illusion of separation? What helps you to connect to 
whatever you want to call it, the unified field, God, divinity, whatever you want to call it. What are your practices? Mm -hmm. Would you choose to share with me? Sure. Well, I'd like to hear you. Yeah. Um, well, I shared a little bit about um, the tapping, but I think that um, um, <laughs> I was going to say self pleasuring, but I don't know. Really <laughs> really really like That's that. legal. You're allowed. That's that is what we're going to be talking about tomorrow, and <laughs> Emma would probably <laughs> touch on that too. So, not always my forte to talk about, but I, I do find <laughs> that. Um, like having personal practices for doing plant medicine, uh, tarot card pulling, you know, um, really connecting to self-love and love mm -hmm. of the body has been uh, a really powerful way for me to come back to self and um, and dance. I mean, when you were yeah. doing that kind of movement, Amber, I was like, all right, we need to get that movement in. And I really feel like song and movement and, and really feeling it in the body is such a powerful way to connect um, back to self, back to center. And yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I'll yeah. add. Yeah, okay. Yes. I'll add to that. <laughs> um, so um, there's so many, so many different flavors mm -hmm. of connection, right? And I love that you're asking what our practices are, like how we can be self accountable. You know, like take our own responsibility for our experience of connection. Um, and in contrast to this, like. I mean, I have a lot more practices now and I'm a lot more masterful, but when I was in that first pregnancy that I was like, oh my God, I'm not in charge and this, how's this baby gonna get out of me? I also had an experience, like kind of a relational traumatic experience. And during that, I felt so alone. Mm -hmm. I felt so alone. And I was walking the beach crying and I went, oh, I have a baby inside of me. Like, <laughs> What? <laughs> like, that's pretty extreme. Like how much the illusion of separation mm. is like rawr, woven in there, right? And can take hold, especially when there's fear and survival and trauma and drama. So like that um, one part of what I want to speak to, it's like that way to kind of shift that more reptilian brain survival, um, like defend ourselves, pull away so we don't get eaten by the enemy kind of thing, or even our own tribe is to do some shaking, mm -hmm. um, like literally like do vibrating, shaking, <sighs> breathing and let the nervous system, I say, I call it defrag, mm -hmm. like let it defrag release mm -hmm. and like yeah. get some space in there because yeah. everything gets in lockdown right so get some space in there and as i get some space personally like as i keep doing that you could do it without music and or with music but then if you do add music and then you kind of move to the music mm -hmm. I do it's that like every day too. yeah it's every like day. this direct you know main vein <laughs> right into this experience of mm -hmm. uh, what i call connection it's like how i'm like like connecting through my body beyond my body to the music to the energy flow to mm -hmm. the space around me or if i'm really struggling i can go and i can go hug a tree or go and another one i personally really love is getting in water so getting in water like is like oh for my <laughs> constitution it's like perfect oh perfect i get in the water i'm like oh thank you thank you i'm okay i'm safe i'm held all as well it's like i can try it <laughs> well, this is kind of a unique situation, but I, I do want to give people the chance to uh, share a little bit um, about what you do. So I'm going to go to Viraja since she just spoke. Uh, Viraja, I'm going to your website, and she actually has two, but this is receivemorelove.com. And tell us a little bit about the work you're doing um, with women and, and yeah, and how people can, when they click apply, what are they applying for? <laughs> Great. So, yeah, I, I'm in a transformational intimacy coach. I help people repair intimacy, awaken intimacy, and advance their intimacy. So they can have that experience, the direct experience of connection in all aspects of their life mm -hmm. and the love that they truly want. So what Scott was sharing is a um, program that I have for women and we're moving through the key blocks that we have to intimacy and how to understand them, how to be with them, how to come into um, integration and fullness with them so they're not hijacking 
our experience of connection and love and intimacy in our lives. So there's a variety of things that we do through that. And that's also what I do in my private work with um, couples as well and, and women. And it's a fascinating journey. And I love meeting people where they're 